It is a group that was founded in 1913. More than 100 years later, it is still a problem in the United States. We are talking about the Anti-Defamation League, fighting hate and bigotry. Mark Tobin joins us now. He is the uh, Anti-Defamation League Southwest Regional Director. Used to live in San Antonio. Mark, thank you very much for joining us today. First off, what is the Anti-Defamation League and what do they do? I mean, like I said, I know you fight hatred, you fight bigotry, right. but you also have do studies. You also uh, find if there's something that's that's occurring more and where it's occurring than other places. That's right. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's it's good to be home, uh, so to speak. Uh, so the Anti-Defamation League, as you uh, said, was founded in 1913 uh, with a dual mission. Uh, which was to stop the defamation of the Jewish people, uh, but also to secure justice and fair treatment for all. Uh, we understand uh, that, that Jews and all people uh, who suffer bigotry uh, and racism and injustice are only as safe as any one group that might be subject to that, to that hate. Um, we do that in a number of ways. Certainly education is at the forefront of what we do. Uh, but everything that we uh, work on and the education that we produce, uh, the initiatives that we seek, it's all based on data. We need to understand where the hate is, what kind of hate it is, who it is directed to. Uh, so we are extraordinarily data-driven uh, in our strategy so that we can figure out how to address uh, whether it's hate, racism, bigotry, anti-Semitism um, that is coming from uh, places around the country. And part of that data plays right into a study that your organization recently did looking at the rise of white supremacist propaganda in the U.S. Tell us a little bit about the purpose of that study, the scope and really the findings. Yeah, so we, as I mentioned, uh, drill down on data in a number of areas every year. And one of those is to understand uh, white supremacist propaganda. And typically this occurs whether through leafleting or through uh, some kinds of uh, ad hoc uh, kinds of um, propaganda uh, events um, or things like banner drops where perhaps they might drop a banner from a bridge over a freeway. And we've been monitoring this for for, for many, many years. Um, and for example, in 2015, both in Texas and in the country in 2015 and 16, we found zero, zero number of white supremacist propaganda events. In 17, we saw some. In Texas, there was 17 and around the country, 428. Uh, 2019, 260 in Texas and a little over 2,700 in the country. In 2020, around the country, 5,125 episodes of white supremacist propaganda, and of those, 574 were in Texas, unfortunately, to, re to lead the nation. That's a doubling of what you've seen so far. Is there, is there one particular group, when we talk about Texas and we zero in on Texas, is there one particular group that you were looking at at the ADL who you believe is responsible for most of this propaganda? Yeah, well, first of all, there are about three groups that make up, uh, I believe it's about 90% of it. That's the Patriot Front, uh, this New Jersey European Heritage Association, and then the National Socialist Club. Uh, the, the first, uh, the Patriot Front and the National Socialist Club have been particularly involved in Texas and in San Antonio, but of this large number, the Patriot Front uh, is responsible for about 80%. Over 4,000 of the episodes of the 5,000 plus episodes have been uh, the responsibility of the Patriot Front. Uh, the Patriot Front um, is a white supremacist based organization. Uh, and they, let me say that, first of all, they're, they're not patriots um, and they are only a front for, for racism and for bigotry and for for spewing hate uh, and divisiveness amongst our country. So given what you found in that study, those disheartening numbers, uh, especially when it comes to what's coming out of the state of Texas, now we're looking at a rise in crimes, hate crimes, hate directed toward Asians, Asian Americans. 
Does that seem at all a surprise to you, given the rise in that kind of propaganda? You know, unfortunately, uh, no. Uh, you know, the the anti-Asian hate uh, really started, you know, when the pandemic started in earnest, when a lot of people, you know, had to start working remotely. Uh, and that's when I first recall is hearing about it. Uh, and it is, you know, bad enough that people had to deal with the effects of the pandemic, whether it is trying to stay safe or fighting the illness itself or, you know, being a healthcare worker or losing a job and, and the economics of the pandemic. But then uh, to also have to deal with discrimination and hate uh, that was propagated at the highest levels of our government uh, from the White House by using derogatory terms in order to call attention to the pandemic. So instead of being helpful, it actually made things worse for a number of people. And it played into this narrative that many of the white supremacist groups were already uh, pushing out through the propaganda, uh, whether it was the leafleting that we just talked about or in particular through the online hate, which is an enormous problem uh, and something that we've been working uh, to resolve uh, because so much of the hate and so much of the connectivity between extremists happens online. Mark Tubin with the Anti-Defamation League. Mark, uh, we're out of time, but quickly, if somebody wants to know how they can help in the effort to fight hate, to fight bigotry, I think shining a light on it is one way, and that's what I hope we're doing today. Uh, yeah. But it, there are tips on your website as well, correct? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, please uh, visit www.adl.org. And one thing is, um, if you do experience hate or discrimination or see it, please report it. So it's if you visit our website, there's a report incident uh, uh, opportunity. Please report it. So that way we understand uh, what what's happening. But it's more so there. The responsibility is incumbent upon every single person not to accept uh, the the words that lead to the kind of violence that we've seen, particularly among um, people of, of AAPI origin. Uh, it, it's, it's something that everybody's gonna have to take responsibility for, uh, not just uh, obviously our leaders, but, but every single person from our educators to our parents, to leaders at the local state or level. And by the way, I just wanna mention that uh, the San Antonio City Council led by the mayor they were the first in the nation to pass an anti-hate COVID resolution, which became the model for the entire country. Uh, it was a model that we put out and they were the first to pass it uh, and indicated that San Antonio will not stand up uh, to, will, will stand against uh, the kind of hate that is being uh, propagated. Mark Tobin, Anti-Defamation League, again, thank you so much for your time.